On the 13th of February 2017, then Senator Jackie Lambie and Islamic youth leader Yasmin Abdel Majid had a screaming match on Australia's Q&A. And within it, Yasmin asserted the following. Excuse me, Islam to me is one of the most, is the most feminist religion, right? We got equal rights well before the Europeans. We don't take our husband's last names because we ain't their property. And I simply can't let that slide. This is Islam is the most feminist religion debunked. Anybody that supports Sharia law in this country should be deported. So do you know what Sharia law is? Yes, but it doesn't what, have Do you know rights. what it is? Me you praying five Sharia law? Of course, me you? praying five times a day is Sharia. Okay. Right? Like basic. What about the equal rights for women? What, what about what that about? That is completely separate from oh, Islam. So now you can be a Sharia law supporter and be half pregnant at the same time. What Come are you on. talking about? Let's, let's just, you are talking about stuff you don't person. know anything about. Like, okay, I'm not going. I'm not going to attack you personally. What but the, my frustration is that people talk about Islam without knowing anything about it. And they're willing to completely negate any of my rights as a human being, as a woman, as a person with agency, simply because they have an idea about what my faith is about. Excuse me, Islam to me is one of the most, is the most feminist religion, right? We got equal rights well before the Europeans. We don't take our husband's last names because we ain't their property. Right? We were given the right to own land. We are... Uh, like, the fact is, what is culture is separate from what is faith. And the fact that people go around dissing my faith without knowing anything about it and want to chuck me out of a country, I have done... And Muslims... The fact is, Jackie, I agree. The fact is, we have wait, one wait. law in this country and it is the Australian law. In it's Islam. not Sharia law. In Islam. Not in this country. Do you know what not Sharia in my, law Not is. in my day. In, in Sharia, it says you follow the law of the land on which you are on. It says in Islam that you follow the law Do of the land on which you are on. You tell me why? Why not women are trying to ask you that? Don't tell me you tell me Jackie, that. Jackie, that is not both my religion. Can I, can I just say that shouting at each other is not going to help? That you. is okay. true. So please stop. <laughs> Meow. Crap, I'm going to get done for misogyny now. That's a whole other level of harassment, really. <laughs> Jokes aside, within this short exchange, Jackie and Yasmin both made several assertions. And while I find fault with Jackie's, and specifically her rhetoric, I find greater fault with Yasmin's, as not only are they factually incorrect, they're dangerous. Over the last few years, there's been an influx of female Muslim activists insisting that Islam is a girl's best friend, and it's about time that real feminists called out this insulting tripe for what it is. So what I'm offering you today is the story of how Islam has made me a feminist. Who in society respect, uh, deserves my respect and kindness? And so the Prophet replied, your mother. What it means is that your mother actually deserves three times more respect than your dad does be just because she had to bear it with you for nine months. So many times you've brought up women in Islam. I'd just like to correct that I've read the Quran and all Muslim scholars would agree with me that Islam gives women a lot of rights. I mean, Absolutely. I am a young Muslim woman myself. I sit before you, I have a voice and I can speak to you and I can look you in the eye. And I do have my rights. And when I go to Iran, I'm actually Iranian as well. So when I go to Iran, I also have my rights. We're going to take that as a comment, a very passionate one at that. Okay, well, no. Uh, no, no, we're not. No, we're not going to take it as a comment. I can, I can see your face, I can see your hair, and I can see you sitting in an audience with young gentlemen. Don't you tell me you can do any of that in Iran. I can, though. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you cannot. I can, in Iran. In Iran. You insult your sisters in Tehran who are being beaten. I stop for a You're being beaten and raped every day when you say that they have their rights in the Islamic Republic. It's an insult to the women of Iran. I do not. I stop for Yeah, Hitch. You go, go. So here's the plan. I'm going to identify and then address each of Yasmin's claims, starting with her concept of Sharia law. Anybody that supports Sharia law in this country should be deported. So do you know what Sharia law is? Yes, but it doesn't what, have Do you know rights? what it is? Are me you praying five, five Sharia law? Of course, me praying five times a day is Sharia. Okay. Right? Yes, praying five times a day is Sharia, but so too is stoning homosexuals to death, executing apostates, and requiring two female witnesses in court to oppose one male witness. To put it simply, the term Sharia refers to Allah's immutable divine law, and it evidently originally meant way or path. Hence, Sharia law means divine law, and it's derived from various Islamic sources, such as the Quran and the Hadith. Now, the reason this needs to be made clear is because Yasmin's Sharia law is, well, Yasmin's. Yeah. 
I can't even know anything about my religion. Why are curled? You tell me that. That is not my religion. Really, Yasmin, executing homosexuals isn't an edict of your religion. Because the hadith plainly states, if a man who is not married ceased committing sodomy, he will be stoned to death. And within the Quran, your prophet Muhammad says, whoever you find committing the sin of the people of Lot, kill them, both the one who does it and the one to whom it is done. According to the ILGA, there are currently eight countries in which homosexuality is punishable by death, that being Iran, Sudan, Saudi Arabia and Yemen, parts of Somalia and northern Nigeria, and coincidentally, they all justify this punishment with explicit reference to the aforementioned Islamic sources. That is, they all justify this punishment with explicit reference to Sharia law. And so yes, Yasmin can say, That is not yeah, my religion! Trying. But in doing so, she's committing a no true Scotsman fallacy. She's hand waving away legitimate criticisms of Sharia law by insisting that only her very unique interpretation is the real one. To dust off and re-employ the almighty glove of Hitch, She's doing her sisters abroad, who are truly suffering under Sharia law, a grave disservice. Moving on, I think Yasmin is very much mistaken when she says... The fact is, what is culture is separate from what is faith. And... That is completely separate from our awesome. The truth is that culture and religion heavily influence one another, and under the rubric of a theocracy, they are pretty much indistinguishable. As is the case, for example, in Saudi Arabia. As a culture, Saudi Arabia overwhelmingly despises homosexuals because it's overwhelmingly Muslim. We see this type of scapegoating by Islamic apologists all the damn time. They attribute all that is bad about Islam to culture and all that is good about Islam to Islam. And this is precisely what Yasmin is doing here. Anyhow, next, I want to respond to the statement that Yasmin received an applause for. In Sharia, it says, you follow the law of the land on which you are on. It says in Islam that you follow the law Did of the you land. Tell me why? Yes, due to a verse in chapter 4 of the Quran which states, O ye who believe, obey Allah and obey his messenger and those who have authority over you, Sharia law holds that Muslims must follow the law of the lands upon which they are on, but only if those laws are not in contradiction with their religion. Or to quote the hadith, it is necessary upon a Muslim to listen to and obey the ruler, as long as one is not ordered to carry out a sin. If he is commanded to commit a sin, then there is no adherence or obedience. And so what this equates to is Muslims saying, yes, I'll live according to your rules, but only if they don't contradict my rules. And finally, I want to address the crux of Yasmin's central claims. Excuse me, Islam to me is one of the most, is the most feminist religion. Right? We got equal rights well before the Europeans. We don't take our husbands' last names because we ain't their property. To begin, when Yasmin says... We got equal rights well before the Europeans. I'm fairly certain she's misspoke, because female Muslims don't have equal rights even today, let alone historically. What I think she meant to say was that Muslim women had more rights than European women during the early days of Islam, which, so far as my research yields, is correct. The Romans, Athenians, and of course, Christians horrifically subordinated women. However, long before the inception of Islam, many non-European women enjoyed significantly more rights than Islam has ever granted them. For example, in Mesopotamia, women could buy, own, sell, and inherit land, could engage in commerce, and could testify in court as equal to men, unlike, say, women today under Sharia. Secondly, when Yasmin says, We don't take our husband's last names because we ain't their property. She's clutching at straws. Sure, Muslim women don't take their husband's last name, but historically they have been, and to the largest extent still are, treated as if they are second-class citizens. For example, a Muslim woman can initiate divorce, but imams will often inhibit her unless she has her husband's consent or proof of legitimate grounds. Because, again, according to Sharia law, a woman's word is only worth half that of a man's. But if a Muslim man wants to divorce one of his wives, he can do so at any time and without reason, so long as she's not menstruating. So, yeah, tell me again how Islam is the most feminist religion. My frustration is that people talk about Islam without knowing anything about it. This is most certainly true, I'll grant Yasmin that. But she, and other Muslim apologists, talk about Islam as if people know nothing about it, and that's also not acceptable. The truth is that Islam is not only not the most feminist religion, it's actually one of the biggest threats to feminism.
Since the Quran asserts that it is the last revelation, its unchanging, misogynistic edicts are forever tethered to antiquity, and while moderate interpretations will continue to grow vaguer and vaguer, such has been the case with Christianity, the fact remains, and will always remain, that Islam is not the most feminist religion, and it certainly isn't more feminist than non-religious secularism and humanism. Anyhow, I'm Stephen Woodford, slash Rationality Rules, and as always, thank you kindly for the view, and an extra special thank you to my wonderful patrons and those of you who have supported the channel via PayPal and merchandise. As a quick update on the debunked game, I've managed to finalise a lot of the rules, have designed a few of the cards, and am aiming to release a Kickstarter for it late January slash early February. And so if you're interested, please stay tuned by following me on Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Until next time, my fellow apes. Until next time.